Rev up your engines. Alex, A says, Scotty, I just bought a 95 Toyota Camry. The coolant doesn't look dirty, but should I replace it anyway since I don't know the last time it's been changed? Yes, it's a good idea. There's different types of coolants, and they last for different periods of time. The best coolant out there is the Holt coolant that Toyota uses, hybrid organic acid technology. Yours didn't come with that, but you should flush it all out and put some of that in now. Then you don't have to think about it for like seven years, but do not mix it. You don't ever want to mix different types of coolant. So you would want to flush all the coolant out of that Camry, get everything out, then put 50% Holt coolant and 50% water. Now, if you don't want to go that far, you could use the old coolant, organic acid technology. It costs a little bit less, but it's still pretty good stuff. But get rid of all the old stuff, because you'd have no idea what's in there, how old it is, especially if it's 95, and then put in the new stuff. Most definitely says, hey Scotty, what do you think of Monroe brake pads? Any good? I remember hearing they're made in the US. You know, here's the funny thing. I used to like them years ago when I was a kid. We used to buy them and they were good pads. But a few years back, I bought some of their high end ones, the more expensive ones, the high quality ones, and they were horrible. They made all kinds of noise. They looked cheaply made. Some of them, the pad wasn't even glued onto the backing steel right. You could see some of them were crooked. I don't use them anymore because I just, maybe they're getting better now, but the last time I used one was a couple years ago and it was so poorly made, I'd stop buying them. MC273MC says, hey Scotty, should I get a 2019 Toyota Sequoia? They're called Sequoias because they're like Sequoia trees. They're huge. They're gigantic things. If you want a gigantic vehicle, I'd buy that. It's one of the best gigantic vehicles out there. Now realize, there's still tremendous gas hogs in town. Those things are so big and heavy with their big V8 engines, they do not get very good gas mileage. They last a long time. I personally have customers with them. When I ask them, uh, is it running okay? Oh yeah, it's running great. And I say, well, what about your gas mileage? And they say, Scotty, we don't even want to check the gas mileage because we know it's probably so low we'll be depressed if we know how low it is driving it in town. But if you want a big vehicle like that, go ahead and buy one. Just realize the price of gas is low now here in Texas. Last I saw one was $1.80 a gallon. It's not going to last. It's going to go back up again, and you're not going to be happy if gas is $5 a gallon and you're getting bad gas mileage. Just realize that. Jim Wilson says, Scotty, my car is some clear coat peeling up. I wash and wax it monthly already. What else can I do to prevent peel? And do you think those ceramic coating products would help? Those ceramic coating products, from my experience, it's a line of baloney. I've tried out various different ones. And for some weird reason, a bunch of them seem to come to me, at least, from Russia. <laughs> but uh, none of those things do what they say. I tried them out on stuff. A eh, bunch of malarkey. And a lot of times, it'll be a little bottle. It'll be $49. You know, most of that's a bunch of hooey. The problem with clear coating is... If you got clear coating and it's starting to peel, it's shot. And the only thing you can do is take it off with remover and re-clear coat the car uh, if the paint underneath is okay. Otherwise, you got to paint the whole car over. But if it's just a clear coat, you have to remove it and re-clear coat it. There's lots of guys that'll do that. And if you want to spend that kind of money, go right ahead. But once it starts peeling, it's too late. There's nothing that you can do other than remove it and clear coat it over because it's just peeling off. And it's not like humans where you get a sunburn and you peel off the dead skin. <laughs> Cars aren't alive. There's nothing under that's going to grow back in. John Vidal says, is Porsche owned by Volkswagen? Can you confirm? Oh yeah, Volkswagen owns Porsche, they own Audi, it's a big company, they bought a lot of companies out. Now you got to understand, basically, Porsche, the early Porsches were just fancy Volkswagens. I mean, they had the same little bitty four-cylinder engine, a James Dean Porsche that he died in was a... Porsche, but they had the four-cylinder Volkswagen engine with a couple of carburetors on it because it was a racing one, but no, they always had closed ties anyways. The, the problem is that the technology that's in the Porsche, which is high technology, they put a lot of it in the Volkswagen, so now they're more expensive and complicated to fix. <laughs> Used to be about a Volkswagen Beetle, any moron could fix it. They were very simple and easy to maintain. You could even change the oil without jacking the car up. Just crawl under, and empty it out, put two and a half quarts of oil in, and away you went. But not anymore. It was actually worse for Volkswagens than it was for Porsche. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.